Hey horror fans, Adam here from Hooked on Horror. Uh, me and Craig have been working together the last couple of weeks to bring you this amazing video horror quiz, which you can play from the safety and comfort of your own home. <coughs> Managed to get some amazing special guests uh, for this, and honestly, I can't thank any one of them more. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having all of you involved. Big shout out to everyone who's basically made this video a reality. Um, I'll leave you be. Go enjoy the quiz. Let us know how you got on uh, via our social media channels and website uh, using the hashtag HOHQuizShow. Go enjoy. Have fun. Hi everyone. I'm writer-director Craig Fisher. I have a few short horror films on YouTube such as Nightmare, You've Been Bad, The Midnight Jester and the upcoming A Christmas Nightmare. I'm also working in partnership with Adam Williams for Hooked on Horror to bring you this amazing quiz show. So I just want to take this quick opportunity to say a massive thank you to everyone that got involved in the quiz. Um, and I really hope you all enjoy this. It's been a lot of fun to work on and I can't wait to hear what you all think. And if you've all enjoyed this, why don't you get in touch with Hooked on Horror. Send us your scores and your Zoom video sessions and yeah, just let us know how you did. Good luck everyone. Hey y'all, it's Hannah Kasolka. Some of you may know me as Casey Rance from The Exorcist TV Show, and the rest of you are saying there was an Exorcist TV show? And yeah, there was. You can find it on the internet. I don't know where you're at online. Check it out if you want, or don't. I don't know. And the rest of you might not recognize me. I had blonde hair on the show, so now it's brown. I know it can be confusing, but I have a, one thing that might help some. <clears throat> How's that? Now do you know? Great. Now that we've got that cleared, <laughs> I uh, am here to give you guys some trivia questions because Hooked on Horror asked me if I would be a part of this because a lot of people are stuck at home right now and maybe bored. And I'm here to hopefully entertain you a little bit. And if you're bored, I know it's tough, like sick of being inside and sick of who you live with or sick of being by yourself if you don't live with anybody. And, you know, I like to remind myself that, you know, I'm pretty lucky if I get bored because I just have to sit at home and put on wigs and play trivia. And I have a lot of friends and family who are healthcare workers and essential workers, and I am so thankful for what they do, and they get to be heroes, and I get to stay home and wear wigs. So, anyways, thank you guys. If you are an essential worker or healthcare worker, or if you just stay at home and you're washing your hands and you're being chill, then you're doing a great job also. You know, we can't let the bastards win. Which is the perfect segue to my trivia, because it was said by this character in the Exorcist TV show, season one, 
episode 10. Don't let the bastards win. Happy lockdown. I am Paul Etheridge. I'm the writer director of the queer slasher film Hellbent and welcome to my questions. Uh, first one is a two-parter. Uh, 1951's Thing from Another World and 1982 film John Carpenter's The Thing, both about an alien crashing into the uh, Antarctic, uh, were both based on the same source material. What is the source material? Second part of the question is, what is the real life inspiration for that source material, the shape-shifting alien? Uh, back in a sec. Hi, Trace Thurman, co-host of Bloody Disgusting's Horror Queers podcast here to quiz you on Scream 2. So, number one. Marco Beltrami has done tremendous work on the Scream franchise over the years, but there is one unoriginal piece of music that made its way into Scream 2. The question is, excerpts from the score of which 1990s action film were used for Dewey's theme in Scream 2? Hey guys, Tyler Main here. Hooked on Horror is doing a quiz and asked me to come up with a question for you. Well, here's my question. Scout Taylor and Compton and I have been in how many movies together? And name them. Answer's coming right up. In 1986, we saw the release of the camp 80s horror, Killer Party. But can you tell me the original film title? Hey, I'm Don Mancini. I am quarantined here with my family in LA. And I'm here to give you a diverting little horror quiz to hopefully distract you from the horrors of real life. So, okay, the first question is, how many LGBT characters are featured throughout the Chucky franchise? This being Pride Month, that question seemed appropriate. So, how many LGBTQ characters appear in the Chucky franchise? Hey guys, this is Brock from Cocktail Party Massacre, Earth's favorite horror movie game show podcast. And today I'm going to ask you some questions about Chopping Mall. So, let's get started, shall we? When the teens start getting picked off one by one, the remaining teens make a run for it. They go to Peckinpah's Sporting Goods Store. That's named after Sam Peckinpah, who directed The Wild Bunch. He was also a minor actor in this popular 50s sci-fi horror movie. Hey there, horror fans! How you doing? Your man Art the Clown here, David Howard Thornton from the movie Terrifier and the upcoming Terrifier 2. Now, I know we're all stuck inside right now, bored out of our minds because of this quarantine. So I thought it'd be fun to play a little bit of Terrifier trivia with you guys. So, question number one. What film... Did Art the Clown make his debut in? Mm. Hey, horror fans. I am Troy Escamilla, the director of the feature films Party Night, uh, Mrs. Claus, and the upcoming Teacher Shortage. Now, Party Night and Mrs. Claus, if you're interested, are available to watch for free on Amazon Prime or Tubi. Um, or you can order the DVDs. Woohoo! Support indie horror. Anyway, I'm here to ask you a couple questions about my favorite horror film of all time, Black Christmas, even though it's backwards, Black Christmas. Okay, so here we go. My first question is, what is the name of the house mother's cat in Black Christmas? Now, obviously, I should go back and say I'm referring to the 1974 original version. Okay, so what was the name of the house mother's cat? Hmm. Second question, question number two. Bob Clark, who directed Black Christmas, also directed another classic Christmas film. What is it? Hmm. And lastly, the last question. In Black Christmas... A little girl is found murdered in the park. What is her name? So those are my three questions for you regarding the 1974 masterpiece that is Black Christmas. Good luck. It's Nathan Basil, a.k.a. Leslie Vernon, and I'm here with your Hooked on Horror trivia. What is Leslie Vernon's real name? 
Hey folks, Clint Howard here, and this is Hooked on Horror. I'm having a blast. Are you? <laughs> what was my character's full name in the film Ice Cream Man? Father Marcus, played by the incomparable Ben Daniels. Love you, Ben. I don't know if you're watching this, but I love you. <laughs> okay, answer to the questions about the thing. Uh, the source material is the novella Who Goes There um, by John W. Campbell. It was first published in 1938 in Astounding Science Fiction. Um, the real life inspiration um, the author claims is uh, his mother and aunt were identical twins and when he was a child they would both swap roles and pretend to be his mother and that was uh, upsetting to him and he created a creature for us. Hey everyone, Trace Thurman, co-host of Bloody Disgusting's Horror Queers podcast here to give you your answers on Scream 2 trivia. Number one, Excerpts from the score of which 1990s action movie were used for Dewey's theme in Scream 2? That'd be John Woo's Broken Arrow, originally used as a placeholder while Bob Chami worked on finishing the score. The music track worked so well during test screenings that they decided to keep it in the film. The answer to how many movies Scout Taylor Compton and I have been in together is four. Rob Zombie's Halloween, Halloween 2. 247 degrees Fahrenheit, and a movie through my company, Main Entertainment, which is called Penance Lane, that came out April 21st. You can check it out on Amazon, iTunes, any other platform. Thank you for the support, and I will see you guys soon. Be safe, stay safe, peace out. Killer Party's original title was The April Fool's. But distributors feared it would be confused with another film that came out the same year, April Fool's Day. Tick tock, tick tock. And, okay, time's up. The answer is four. Uh, David from Bride of Chucky, played by Gordon Woolvitt. Uh, Glenn and Glenda from Seed of Chucky. Um, whether you count that as one character or two characters, not sure. Your choice. Um, Curse of Chucky, there is... Oh, by the way, that's the great Billy Boyd, of course, who played Glenn and Glenda. In Curse of Chucky, there is there are Barb and Jill, played by Daniel Basuti and Maitland McConnell. Um, and then in Cult of Chucky, there is... Nurse Carlos, played by Zach Santiago. So that's either four or five that we know of. Um, uh, I always had questions about um, Stillwell, you know, Karen's boss from the first Child's Play. Um, but who's to say? Did you guess Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Because then you would be correct. Answer! Ah. Terrifier! But not the film, the feature film, Terrifier. No, 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 no. It was a short film released in 2011 called Terrifier. It's confusing, ain't it? <laughs> hey, it's Troy again. I'm here to give you the answers to the questions I asked regarding the 1974 film Black Christmas. First question I asked was, what is the name of the house mother's cat in Black Christmas? The answer is Claude, right? Okay, the second question I asked was, director Bob Clark also directed another classic Christmas film. Which one was it? You'll shoot your eye out. Christmas Story. And last question I ask, in the film, a little girl is found murdered in the park. What was her name? Janice. So how'd you do? Leslie Mancuso aptly named after Frank Mancuso Jr., who produced a lot of the Friday the 13th movies. Come on, my character's name in Ice Cream Man was Gregory Tudor. I was the guy that killed his victims and mixed them up into the ice cream. Butterbrickle was my favorite.
Hi everyone, I'm Doug Bradley and I'm delighted to be one of your quiz masters for the Lockdown Horror Quiz. So, my first question is that I have played Pinhead several times. I'm not telling you how many because apparently that's a question that you'll be getting elsewhere in the quiz. But I am, I didn't know this, but I am one of only six actors to play the same horror character at least six consecutive times. Who are the other five actors and which character did they play? So only six actors have played the same horror character on at least six consecutive occasions. I'm one of them. Who are the other five and what were their characters? Hi, my name is Nicholas Vince and I played the Chatterer Cenobite in Hellraiser and Hellbound. And here are a few Hellraiser questions. Doug Bradley played Pinhead in the first eight Hellraiser films. How many other actors are credited as Pinhead on IMDb? Hello there, Sean Clark, host of Horror Salad Grounds and most recently the Daily Collection on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe at Malfunction. So I figured my question should be filming locations related. So my first question will be, the Sherman Oaks Galleria, which was a mall in Sherman Oaks, California, was famous in films like Terminator 2, Commando, and most famously, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But what two horror films were also shot in that mall before it was torn down? Hey guys, first of all, thank you for joining. Um, my name's Kyle Martellacci, and I run an independent production company called Red Razor Pictures. Um, over the last few years, we've made a handful of short horror films, and today I'm here to ask you three questions. One of them will be from one of my own short films, and then two of them will be from scary movies that I love. So, the first question from my short film which is actually more of a fake trailer slasher spoof, Canada Day. What is the name of the killer who goes around murdering the young, beautiful Canadians in the movie? And you can find it on YouTube, or you can find it on my website at redrazorpictures.com. And moving on to question number two, from 1974's Black Christmas, um, which is also a Canadian horror film. What is the last line of dialogue spoken in the movie. And third and final question from 2002's May. What is the final body part that May acquires in order to build her new perfect best friend? Um, thanks again for watching and best of luck. Um, I thought I'd try and slip in a question about Hooked on Horror to see how much you guys actually know. Uh, so Hooked on Horror was started as a fan group in 2015 on Facebook, but can you tell me the month and the year our public Instagram page got started? Uh, you got a bonus point if you get the date as well. Howdy horror fans, Dustin from the Final Boys Podcast here with a few questions about my favorite horror movies. Question one, Toby Hooper's 1974 slasher, Leatherface, is based on which prolific serial killer? Question two, in the 1979 sci-fi horror film, Alien, what are the species of aliens called? Question three, which was the first horror movie nominated for Best Picture? Thank you, Adam, for having me on Hooked on Horror. I'm gonna answer some of your questions. The first one is, what was the name of my segment in VHS one? The first one. And the answer is, or the answers are, Christopher Lee as Count Dracula, Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger, Warwick Davis as the Leprechaun, Tobin Bell as John Kramer slash Jigsaw, and Brad Dourif as the voice of Chucky. The actors credited as Pinhead are, in Hellraiser Revelations, Stephen Smith Collins and Fred Tataschiori, who's credited as Pinhead Voice, Paul T. Taylor in Hellraiser Judgment. And the answer is Chopping Mall. Also, Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge. So both films had mall in the title. That should have been your hint. 
Hello again. So earlier I asked you three questions and now it's time to reveal the answers. Um, the first question that I asked you was from my short film Canada Day and it was what was the name of the killer in the film and the name of the killer is Barry Brantford which is actually the name of two Canadian cities that I just put together. Um, question number two was from 1974's Black Christmas and I asked what was the last line of dialogue spoken in the film and that is Agnes it's me Billy and the answer to my third question from 2002's May what is the final body body part that May acquires in order to build her new best friend um, and she takes the hands of her ex-lover or ex-love interest Adam to build her friend Amy so the answer is hands um, hope you did well and hope you had fun and the answer is 5th of January 2016 that was uh, well the first step in expanding Hooked on Horror and taking it public hey horror fans Dustin from the Final Boys Podcast and I'm back with your answers to my favorite horror movie questions question one Toby Hooper's 1974 slasher, The Leatherface, was inspired by Ed Gein. Question 2. In the sci-fi horror film Alien, the species of alien are called xenomorphs. Question 3. Which was the first horror movie nominated for Best Picture? That would be The Exorcist. It was nominated alongside American Graffiti and The Sting. The answer is Amateur Night. <laughs> well, hello out there, wherever you are. I hope wherever you are, you are safe and sound and enduring this uh, worldwide pandemic. It's one way to spend the spring and summer. Um, I am Steve Coulter, and you might, I emphasize might, uh, recognize me from... Uh, Conjuring films, or uh, two of the Insidious films, or maybe a Lifetime movie from the 90s, uh, or you may not uh, recognize me at all, and that's absolutely fine, especially with my uh, shelter-in-place beard. Um, although I do have the beard uh, in the film The Hunt, uh, which is out now on demand, and, and, and in which, uh, spoiler alert, you can see me kill a man with a ballpoint pen. Um, so there you go. Um, I want to thank, uh, first of all, I want to thank Adam from um, uh, Hooked on Horror for asking me to do this. Um, and so if you're ready, I will ask you, I have three questions uh, in this quiz. And the first is, are you ready? Uh, let me check. Oh, yes, here we go. What was the original title to The Conjuring? Hello. How many seasons of American Horror Story have I been in? Good evening, my victims. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Malvolia, the Queen of Scream. I thought we'd play a little game. You see, I have three questions to ask you. And if you answer them right, well, I'll let you live. And if you answer wrong, well, you know what that means. Okay, first question is, what is the famous film that the director proudly admitted that he used chocolate syrup for blood? Question number two, what historic building is known as the Bat? in the film Session 9. And last question, whose debut film role was in the 1987's The Gate? All right, I'll let you mull these over and be careful. Your life depends on it. <laughs> the werewolf that I portrayed in Annabelle Comes Home is based off the real life character that Ed and Lorraine investigated. True or false? Hey, hi, my name is Jason Davitt and I'm the creator of the uh, cult independent horror, vampire horror films. Um, vampires, Bratcher in Darkness and Lucas Rising. Uh, I eat with my friend, uh, Maximus Black. Hey, 
guy. And uh, we'd just like to ask you uh, three questions um, just to uh, keep you all busy whilst in isolation. Uh, yeah, and my first question is, um, what is the audio clip from which film, sorry, is the audio clip taken at the beginning of Kate Bush's song, The Hounds of Love? That's a toughie. Yeah, I know it is. Um, second question. Um, what is the name of the spirit which is contacted on the Ouija board by Regan, the young girl who gets possessed in the film The Exorcist? Okay. That's another tough one. Well, it's not too bad. Um, and the third and final question, and this is a favourite from mine. Um, what... Let's get this right. What is the name, the first name, of the main vampire? Yes. Yeah, main vampire. You're a wolf. I know, but they're my friends. Right, okay. Yeah, what is the first name of the main vampire in the amazing film Let's Scare Jessica to Death? Okay. Good luck. Yeah. Okay, so the second question is... How many actors have appeared in multiple Chucky films? Hey, I'm Clace. Um, here's a question. When was um, the Bram Stoker novel Dracula first published? Which major worldwide company had a product placement deal in Ice Cream Man? The original title of the country uh, was uh, The Warren Files. Uh, those of you who follow the films know that Ed and Lorraine Warren started it all off. They actually were very real people. Uh, most of their careers were spent uh, debunking things, actually. About 90% of the things they investigated turned out to be you know, a leaky pipe or uh, such. But uh, a certain percentage uh, were genuine uh, psychic phenomena. And uh, if it wasn't for them, uh, I wouldn't have been able to pay my mortgage a few times. So thank you, Ed and Lorraine Warren. I have appeared in four seasons of American Horror Story so far. The first was uh, in Hotel as Will Drake, uh, then Sidney James in Roanoke, uh, Dr. Rudy Vincent, in Colt, and then John Henry Moore in The Apocalypse, one of my faves. Well, my victims, the time has come. So the answer to question number one is none other than Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Yes, he used chocolate syrup as blood in the shower scene. The answer to question number two is the infamous Danvers State Hospital. It opened up its doors in 1878, and the wings off the main building jut out and made it look like a bat in flight. It is currently now an apartment complex. <laughs> and lastly, the actor that made his film debut in the film The Gate is none other than Stephen Dorff. So, how'd you do? Did you get them all right? Because <laughs> it's just about feasting hour for me. If you like what you see and have enough courage, go visit my YouTube channel where you'll see me hosting short horror films and putting on terrifying skits. Or follow me on social media, if you dare. <laughs> Until next time, my victims. It's actually true. In 1991, the Warrens claimed to exorcise a demon manifesting itself as a werewolf, also known as the Hellhound. It was responsible for a series of livestock deaths in England. Right, I asked some questions earlier, and um, the answer to the first question which I asked, which was, what is the audio 
uh, clip, which film is the audio clip taken from for Kate Bush's Hounds of Love song? Um, it is Night of the Demon, which uh, you hear at the beginning of the song, uh, which is, it's coming, it, I can see it's coming it's through the trees. Uh, the answer to the second question um, for the Exorcist question I, I set up yeah. is um, basically the name of the spirit which Regan contacted first of all through her Ouija board is Captain Howdy. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And also um, the final question, what was the first name of the main vampire in Let's Go Jessica to Death, which was Emily? Well, I didn't know that. No. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Take care. And uh, if you're interested in seeing my films, uh, they're available on Amazon Prime and iTunes and things of that nature. It's uh, Vampires Brasher in Darkness and Vampires Lucas Rising. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. The answer is it was first published in the year um, 1897 in May. Tick tock, tick. Eh, time's up. The answer is eight. Brad Dorif, of course, as Chucky, Alex Vincent as Andy, Peter Haskell, who plays Sullivan, the CEO of the uh, Play Pals company, um, is in both Child's Play 2 and 3. Christine Elise, did I miss Christine? No, Christine Elise, yes. Christine as Kyle in Child's Play 2 and Cult and who knows, maybe something else. Um, Jennifer Tilly, of course, as Tiffany, has been in Bride, Seed, Curse, and Cult, and who knows what the future might hold. Um, Fiona Dorif, of course, as Nika, and whatever the hell she is, um, at the end of Cult of Chucky, and who knows what the future might bring, right? Um, Adam Herdig who plays the cop in Curse of Chucky, and he also plays one of Nika's uh, loony bin mates in Cult of Chucky. And finally, Ali Tataran, who plays in Curse, the, is this going on too long? I kind of feel like it might be, oh well. Um, Ali was the delivery girl who delivers uh, the doll to Andy at the end of Curse of Chucky. And then she, like Adam, appeared in an entirely different role. In Cult of Chucky, she played Nurse Ashley. Um, so, I bet very few people could get that right, or at least in the allotted time. Converse Tennis Shoes had a huge promotional deal with Ice Cream Man. As you notice, every kid and myself wore Converse. I got to take mine home. Hey everyone, this is Tyler. Over here is Roman. We are the directors of Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. That's right. And Scream Queen is actually now available on Shudder. So if you haven't seen the documentary about Mark Patton's experience on Nightmare on Elm Street 2, now you can. And just in time for Gay Pride Month. Yay, gay! Yay, gay. So now... We get to entertain you with some queer horror trivia. And here's our questions. You know what? I think we should be in the same screen for this. You ready for some magic? Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is infamous for many things, but it's most famous for a stand sequence, which was inspired by this 1983 teen comedy. Hey everyone, this is Mark Patton from the Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. I'm Jesse. I've been locked down in Mexico for COVID-19, but I thought I'd come and play the game with you. Um, so anyway, so in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, there was a blackboard in the kitchen, and uh, on it, it said, somebody called. So can you tell me who called? Hi, this is Jay-Z Garcia. I'm older and I have, uh, I need to use glasses. So it's really good. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to start off with some trivia. A Nightmare on Elm Street and Candyman 3, which is really two of my favorite type of horror films. I lucked out 
I'm grateful. I'm uh, just a lucky guy. So what year was Candyman Day of the Dead set in? Hi, my name is Joshua Anderson. I am a contributor to Nightmare on Film Street. That's in OFSpodcast.com and to GaylyDreadful.com. And here is my first question. In A Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master, Sheila, portrayed by Toy Newkirk, gives Alice, portrayed by Lisa Wilcox, a mantra to live by to help her better her life. It occurs about midway through the movie in a bathroom scene. What is that mantra? Hey guys, it's Ross over at The Daily Jaws. Here I am with my friend, Bruce, and we've got a couple of questions for you. Question number one. What was the name of the boat that Hooper, Quinn, and Brody went out on to catch the shark? Which country was the film Evil Speak banned? So I got some more for you. Oh, this is from the from the movie. So if you're a purist, but also if you if you are a purist, I think you'd like the show. So or if you don't, it's also fine. I was the older priest who assisted in Reagan's exorcism. Unfortunately, I did not make it out alive. Who played me? In my own film, Nightmare, what sleep-in condition did the main character suffer from? And if you want to find the answer, head to Crypt TV to find the short. Okay, question. In the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I played Grandpa. How long did it take them to apply my makeup? All right, my next question. 1980s film, Brian De Palma's uh, Dress to Kill. Um, uh, the character Kate Miller, played by Angie Dickinson, leaves her lover's apartment to return home to her husband and narrowly misses encountering the killer on the way. Uh, she gets in the elevator and gets to safety into, in the, uh, the lobby of the building and realizes she's left something back upstairs in her lover's apartment. Um, she goes back up, meets the killer, dies. What is it that she forgot and why was it so important? In which 2008 British horror comedy film did I make a cameo appearance? I made a brief appearance in a British horror comedy film in 2008. What was it? After the success of Scream, everyone and their mom wanted to be in Scream 2, so much so that they didn't care how small the part was. One such person is Sarah Michelle Gellar, but one of her future co-stars didn't make the cut. Well, not completely. The question is, which actress is Sarah Michelle Gellar's character Cece talking to on the phone before Ghostface makes a mess of things? Risky Business started the trend in dance sequences with Tom Cruise in his underwear dancing to old time rock and roll. Zach! Time's up. The film was actually set in the year 2020 right now. They didn't have any idea of the COVID and they didn't have any idea of the riots. 25 years after the events in Candyman, farewell to the flesh. The answer, mind over matter. I love Sheila. I love Lisa. Okay, so the question was, what was the name of the boat that Hooper, Quint and Brody went out on to catch the shark? The name of the boat was the Orca. The United Kingdom banned evil speak. They called it a video nasty. I'm proud. Max von Sydow. Yeah, you got it. If you didn't get it, then it's okay. Ding, 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 ding. Answer. Seven hours the first time and five hours the second time. There was a learning curve. Learning curve. And the answer is sleep paralysis, which I suffer with myself. As they say, write what you know. All right, the answer to Dress to Kill question. Uh, what is it that Angie Dickinson's character, Kate Miller, left upstairs that she had to return to and got killed as a result? She left her wedding ring. She got a hookup in the afternoon, took off her wedding ring, and, uh, you know, it's feeling guilty about it. Um, but, sadly, that's what kills her. The answer is the cottage 
starring Andy Serkis, Reese Shearsmith and Jennifer Ellison. I played an angry cottager who was supposed to have a very vicious dog that was only prepared to wag its tail in a very friendly way and pant a bit. The answer is the cottage. Which actress is Sarah Michelle Gellar's character Cece talking to on the phone before Ghostface throws her off the balcony? That'd be Selma Blair, whom Geller would co-star in with Cruel Intentions just two years later. Hi, it's uh, Corey Gonzalez McCurry here from What We Do in the Shadows, and I am going to be one of your quiz masters today. So here are my quiz questions for you. Question number one. My character's best friend in the movie, Stu, uh, and what we do in the shadows, what does he do for a living? Anyway, the final question I have is, how many Chuckies were left standing at the end of Cult of Chucky? Greetings from Tromaville. I'm John from Troma Team, and I'm here to ask you a horror quiz question for Hooked on Horror. And here's your question. On what trauma film did director J.J. Abrams get his start in film as a music contributor? Okay, second question. For the parts in the movie Siren where my character Lily sings, is it me singing, true or false? In which film in the Hellraiser franchise was Pinhead actually referred to as Pinhead? One film in the Hellraiser franchise in which Pinhead was referred to as Pinhead. Which one? Which star of The Man from Uncle appeared in a Hellraiser film, and what was its title? The Dunsmere Mansion in Oakland, California, was the setting of the mausoleum in the original Phantasm. That would be Morningside. So that was the mausoleum. And the original Phantasm also used and so I married an axe murderer and several other things. But what other horror film was also shot at the Dunsmere Mansion? What are Leslie Vernon's turtles' names? Do you know the name of the character that I play in uh, the Conjuring movies? Hey guys, it's Ross over at The Day Is Yours. Okay, time for another question. Complete the famous Jaws line. You're going to need a bigger... What was my character's full name in Candyman, Day of the Dead? I kind of like his name. How many people did Art the Clown kill in the movie, the feature film, Terrifier? And the answer is, I, I still don't really know. Like, if you say IT, maybe you, you win. Um, I know it's got computers or something. Um, he wears a suit, so just if you just say computers, you'll get a point. Ding dong, ding dong. <clears throat> Time's up, and the answer to that question is that the answer will appear in the new TV series, Chucky, coming from the Sci-Fi Channel. Bye. Take your time. Answer. Night Beast. The answer is true. I did, I sang. I sang my part in Siren. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the answer is Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Though, uh, on a technical point, he wasn't actually referred to as Pinhead as a name. He was being called a Pinhead, pejoratively. But that's the only occasion in the Hellraiser franchise when Pinhead was referred to as Pinhead. The actor from the Man From U.N.C.L.E. film, not the TV series, the film, is Henry Cavill as Mike in Hell World. Ready for your answer for number two? The answer is Burnt Offerings, starring Oliver Reed and Karen Black. There's Church and Zoe, named after the resurrected pets from Pet Cemetery 1 and 2. My character, now you didn't go to IMDb and check, uh, hopefully. Uh, my character is Father Gordon. And I've often uh, said that Father Gordon is to the Conjuring movies as 
Commissioner Gordon is to the Batman movies. Um, you know, Father Gordon uh, in the first two Conjuring films basically finds out, ah, oh, there's this thing, very scary, scary thing you gotta do. Uh, so Ed and Lorraine, go take care of it, and I'll sit back here in my comfortable church office while you go do battle with demons. Um, I can tell you that in the third Conjuring movie, um, which we shot last summer, and which will hopefully be coming out this September, barring any more postponements from the coronavirus, uh, Father Gordon, uh, he, he doesn't sit home at his church desk this time. He gets his hands a little dirty. So, um, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Okay, time for the answer. So we asked you to complete the famous line, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Ready? My character's full name was David De La Paz. That movie was really cool to make because the beekeeper guy, I forgot his name, he did all the Candyman's. And I got to see the queen bee, I got to see the behavioral of the whole queen and bee and the hierarchy of, it's incredible. The workers, they all die for the queen. And then you have the Republican guard that protect the queen. I got stung. They had, what happens is the, okay, this is trivia. What makes bees, what attracts bees? Pheromone, pheromone. That's the answer. Pheromone is in bananas uh, and different things. That's why you'll always see a bee. But sometimes it's a yellow jacket. But they put pheromone kind of liquid over me, and then the bees are attracted to it. Um, and they went to get it off, and they were young bees, so they sting you, and it wasn't so bad. Area the two, yes. Answer, Art the Clown killed eight people. So far. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Reddick, creator of the Final Destination film franchise, and also I had my directorial debut this year, um, so look for Don't Look Back, which is going to be my first film that I directed. It's a, a thriller, mystery, supernatural movie, um, so I think you'll like it. Um, so I have three trivia questions for you. Um, these are supposed to, all, to be all about stuff that I've worked on, so I'm not just making them all about me. They made me do it. Uh, my first question is, which actor that starred in the Twilight franchise also starred in two films that I wrote? I didn't know this. Why did Wes Craven choose the color red and green for Freddy Krueger's sweater and the car and the sheets? Which real life hotel inspired the Hotel Cortez in season five of American Horror Story? Released less than a year after the original film, Scream 2's production was troubled to say the least. After a version of the script leaked online, uh, a new ending with new killers was written during filming. The question is, which two characters were the killers in Kevin Williamson's original draft of Scream 2 screenplay? And here is another question. Um, the exterior shots in um, the BBC adaptation um, of this year, 2020, um, where were they filmed? In Chopping Mall, there's a scene where all hell is starting to break loose, and there's a guard inside the control room, and he's reading a, a book of short stories called They Came From Outer Space. Who edited that book, They Came From Outer Space? Where was Father Marin at the beginning of the original Exorcist? And in my own films, which character shows up in both the Midnight Jester, and a Christmas nightmare. Hey, this is Mark Patton again. How are you? Listen, in my kitchen in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, there was a blackboard, and on the blackboard, it told me to call somebody. Can you tell me who? What was my character's name in the fourth Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Uh, the Next Generation? <laughs> what was my character's name? What year did the cult classic Ice Cream Man have its video release? 
Which character did I portray in the 2019 Hellboy film? The answer is Michael Welch. He was in Twilight, and he was also in my Day of the Dead movie and in my movie The Final Wish. He's an amazing actor, amazing guy. Um, you guys should def definitely like follow him on social media. He's amazing. Wes picked red and green as he read in science in a science journal that they were the most clashing colors to the human eye. I didn't know that. The Hotel Cortez was actually inspired by the Cecil Hotel. It's a hotel located in downtown Los Angeles that is famous for its long list of suicides and murders, and it's been there since its opening in 1924. And much like episode four, Devil's Night, the Hotel Cecil did actually house several serial killers over the years, including Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. And your final question. Which two characters were the killers in Kevin Williamson's original draft of Scream 2's screenplay before it was leaked online? That'd be Sid's boyfriend Derek, played by Jerry O'Connell, and her roommate Hallie, played by Elise Neal. Laurie Metcalf's Mrs. Loomis was still the mastermind, though, so I guess Williamson decided that that was one too many killers. They were filmed uh, at Arava Castle in Slovakia, which was also used for... Um, Nosferatu in 1922. The answer to that question, Jim Wynorski, the director of Chopping Mall. The more you know. Iraq. Yeah. Nice. And the answer is Jolly Jim, the creepy little puppet. Mm -mm -mm. Rhonda, that's my sister in real life. All right, you guys have a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Uh, hello from Mexico. Love you all. Bye-bye. Ding, 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 ding. Answer. Dugan. Says it right on my shirt. There's a name badge there. <laughs> I guess it was Officer Dugan, maybe. I don't know. Ice Cream Man made its video premiere in 1995. Long time ago. I portray the infamous Grugach character, which you see throughout the movie. Stephen Graham did the voice, and I provided all the movements and performance. It was a full suit with an animatronic head. Everything I did on set was practical. Later on in post, they added some CGI to the face, but everything moved, it was animatronics. It was amazing. What was the profession of the character that I played in Pumpkinhead, Ashes to Ashes? Pumpkinhead, Ashes to Ashes. What was my character's profession? Before becoming Hollywood horror royalty, Robert England and Jamie Lee Curtis co-starred on this 1970s TV detective show. All right, so, um, oh, my hair's fucking quarantine decided to go blonde. Anyway, what character was I in, what, what character was Lily in both VHS and Siren? My second question, in Adam Green's Hatchet franchise, there is an actor who portrays three different characters over the course of the four movies. What is that actor's name? Hey guys, Tom from the Trauma Team here, kind of hanging out in space. Got a, a little trivia question for you, trauma style. What was the original name of the movie The Toxic Avenger? What is Leslie Vernon's kill count? Okay, I'm going to mix it up a little bit now. So, in the film Shaun of the Dead, Shaun works at an electronics store. The name of the electronics store is a nod to one of the actors in the film Dawn of the Dead, the George A. Romero classic. What is the name of the electronics store? How many films has Art the Clown been in? Tick-tock, mm -hmm. tick-tock, tick-tock. In what film did Troma President Lloyd Kaufman co-star in with Hollywood heavyweights Martin Sheen and Kirk Douglas? What famous singer-slash-dancer was in my movie Tamra? 
Give you a hint. She was married to Channon Tatum. Okay, here we go. What was the make of the car Rod, Tina, Nancy, and Glenn drive off at in the end of the Nightmare on Elm Street film? According to IMDb, in how many films has Ashley Lawrence played Kirsty Cotton? That one, I think. So, perhaps you may want to go away and try getting some answers by opening up this. And the answer is that my character, Doc Fraser, was a mortician. But of course, a mortician with a twist. I was actually killing people to harvest their organs and sell them on the black market and then dump their bodies in a swamp and getting away with it until Pumpkinhead got a hold of me. The two of them teamed up in 1977 for an episode of the Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys Mystery Stories. And the answer is succubus. And I challenge you to delve into that mythology because it is fascinating. Like there are so many different aspects of this demon. Do it. That actor is Perry Shan. He portrays Sean in part one, Justin in part two, and Andrew in part three, and Victor Crowley. Answer, Health Club Horror. Leslie's kill count is 10. Are you ready for the answer for number three? So, Sean worked at 4A Electric, which was a nod to actor Ken Foray from George Romero's film Dawn of the Dead. All right, the answer is four. The short film Terrifier, All Hallows' Eve, the feature film Terrifier, and da -da -da, the upcoming Terrifier 2, which we're hoping to get out to you guys as soon as possible. We're almost done filming. As soon as we're out of this quarantine, we can finish up the rest of this film and get it to you guys soon, and you guys are going to love it. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Art the Clown's up to some really crazy stuff this time. I'm like, you know, he's been up to some crazy stuff before, but this time, ooh, boy, you ain't seen nothing yet. The blood is gonna flow. Well, you guys take care, stay safe, and stay inside right now. Kill you later. <laughs> answer? The final countdown. The answer is the amazing Jenna Dewan, who's a Amazing person, amazing talent. Time's up. The car was a 1958 Cadillac Series 62 convertible. Couple things with that. Some behind the scenes. That that was really a nightmare. We actually do live and we don't die. And there were a couple could have sworn that we did not drive off on a couple shots. The movie had several endings, so we drive off, movie ends, or we drive off and it's Freddy Krueger that envelops us again, or it was all a dream. And number three, Ashley Lawrence's four credits as Kirsty Cotton in Hellraiser movies, Hellraiser, Hellbound, Hell on Earth, and Hellseeker. So, hope you got those okay. Uh, enjoy that little quiz, and I really hope you, your family, and friends are staying well uh, during these difficult times. Take care of yourselves. Bye. There's been talk of a sequel to the Shadows movie invo involving the the wolves, and what is the re what is um the the name that they want to call it to call the movie hey guys ross over at the daily jaws again time for another question so jaws is known as a movie that doesn't show the shark very much but how long is jaws actually on screen is it four minutes five minutes or six minutes i'm going to make this one up because i do know this what inspired Wes Craven to write A Nightmare on Elm Street? This is what he told me. How does my character, John Henry Moore, die in American Horror Story Apocalypse? 
And now, a question about one of my favourite horror sequels. Poltergeist 3. How many times do they scream, Carolyn! throughout the duration of the movie? So now, our final question. Uh, the shooting uh, location that the filmmakers used um, in the hospital. Uh, for the two of the Insidious movies, Insidious 2 and 3, and also uh, was also featured in which Rob Zombie film? So there's a hospital location that was used in uh, Insidious 2 and 3, and uh, it was also uh, featured in a Rob Zombie movie. Which Rob Zombie movie was that? And here's a third and final question. Um... Episode three of uh, the BBC ad adaptation of this year um, features a, a direct reference to um, a Stephen King novel. Is that true or false? Can you name the six killers in Funhouse Massacre? In The Final Wish, there was an actor also from Final Destination who starred in that film. Who was that actor? What was the original title for Unfriended Dark Web? In Todd Strauss Schultz's The Final Girls, the teens in the movie get transported into a 1980s film, Camp Bloodbath. What year was that movie released within the film? Okay, this one feels tough. Who played the voice for the demon Pazuzu in the movie? And the answer is... Werewolves. So, oh, I get it because of the werewolves now. Ah. Oh. Okay, so Jaws is known as a movie where the shark is not on screen for very long. But how long was Jaws on screen for? Was it four minutes, five minutes, or six minutes? The answer was only four minutes. Isn't that right? Time's up. He had a nightmare. And it really bothered him, and he went investigating that idea. And I think um, Wes Craven's first wife, I forgot her name, she was part of it. She was part of helping him do that. They, be, they both became my mother, mother and father, especially for me and Heather, Amanda, and Johnny. Michael Langdon's loyal henchwoman, Miriam Mead, Kathy Bates, who takes such pleasure in murdering me, by the way, cuts my Achilles heels on both feet, slashes my throat, and just to make sure that I died, she douses me in gasoline and sets me on fire. We shot that scene at about 3.30 in the morning at an abandoned uh, gas station and uh, is intense and so fun. And the answer is 121 times. 121 times they screamed, Carol Ann. The Rob Zombie film where the location was featured was, and I have to look at this, it's the 2012 Rob Zombie film, The Lords of Salem. So if you're scoring at home, it was the Lords of Sam, Salem. Um, it was called the Linda Vista uh, Community Hospital, and it is an actual standing hospital. And people have asked in the past, were you ever scared in any of the, the shoots for the Insidious films or the Conjuring movies? And I, in general, uh, we're not, because you're on a set and there's 100 crew people around. Um, or you're in a location that's someone's house or stuff, and there's smoke machines and things. But shooting at that hospital was genuinely scary. First of all, we shot uh, for Insidious 2 um, from around midnight to about 5 in the morning until the sun came up. And it is a deserted hospital. And um, a couple of things that were scary, one of the uh, uh, sets well within the hospital where we shot was in the records room down in the basement and there are still all the hospital records on the shelves and it's dusty and completely deserted 
um, usually on a set you will wander around um, you know in between shots or while you're waiting because there's a lot of waiting on a movie set but that was one set that you did not wander around you stayed close to everybody else um, one a practical joke that Angus uh, Sampson uh, played on me was uh, they said Steve you got to come to this this room it's really kind of cool and uh, I wandered down this very dark hallway and into one of the actual hospital rooms and there was a crib as I recall with a little baby old broken baby doll in it and Angus was sitting in the corner and he jumped out and I just about wet myself um, uh, one of the reasons it was so scary at that location was um, while we were waiting there was a, a person from the neighborhood who I was talking to and they said there was actually a murder at that hospital, so um, we were very glad uh, to uh, to get out of there. So, I guess those are our three questions. Um, uh, it's been nice, quote unquote, chatting with you. And uh, again, stay safe, stay somewhat sane, and uh, good luck out there. That is actually true, because um, the wallpaper in Jack's room in episode three is the same pattern as a wall as as um as a carpet in the Kubrick adaptation of The Shining from 1980. Animal the Cannibal, Doctor Suave, Rocco the Clown, Mental Manny Dyer, Dollface, and of course Taxidermist. That's me. <laughs> The actor was the one and only Tony Todd. Um, he was in you know, a lot of Final Destinations, and he was in The Final Wish as well. The original title was actually Exploit. The writer-director Steven Susko wanted the film to live on its own since it wasn't a sequel. But since Unfriended was so popular, the studio wanted to use the name since the audience was already aware of it, and then they added Dark Web. Mercedes McCambridge. If you got that one, great job. That feels hard to me. I mean, maybe it was easy. Either way, good job. So, thanks for playing. That's what I got for you guys. If you're still bored, come say hi to me on Instagram. I uh, mod on it that often, but say hey, follow me. I'll try to post. And if you're really bored, Tell me how many of these you got right. Maybe I'll give you another one. You know, if you got four out of four, or how many do we do? I don't know. I don't, I can't count. I don't know what, I don't even know what day it is. Anywho, <laughs> stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. We're gonna get through this and hope you guys are well. See ya. Zack Snyder's 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead. When they first come upon the mall, they see a department store named after one of the actors from George A. Romero's original Dawn of the Dead. What is the name of that store? Though it initially failed at the box office, this late 2000s queer horror comedy featured an insatiable succubus with a sexual appetite that swung both ways and became a cult classic. Next question, how did the filmmakers shoot Tina's death scene in A Nightmare on Elm Street? In my scene, with Renee Zellweger in the four Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what other two Texas Chainsaw alumni uh, were in the same scene? At the end of Chopping Mall, one of the big surprises is that Ferdy is still alive. Ferdy is played by Tony O'Dell, who also starred in this popular 80s sitcom that takes place in a classroom full of nerds. Hellraiser Deader and Hellraiser Hellworld, the seventh and eighth films in the Hellraiser franchise, were filmed back to back. Is that true or false? Which famous slasher icon have I played? I'll throw one more in there just because I did two of them on the final wish and I think that might have been like too much final wishing. Um, let me see. Special question. 
Um, what was the name of the director who did one of my films, but also directed Friday the 13th Part 2 and Part 3? The werewolves in what we do in the shadows. Can you name what their kind of most famous slogan is? Hey guys, Ross again from the Daily Jaws with Bruce. One final question for you. Jaws was the highest grossing movie of the 1970s. True or false? So I'm going to do another trivia. When Johnny Depp was cast on A Nightmare on Elm Street, was he a... Uh, was he in a rock band? Was he working at a shoe store? Was he hanging around uh, people with that were actors like Nick Cage? Or was he just a starving actor and looking for a job? And the answer is Galen Ross, who is the actress who played Francine and George A. Romero's classic Dawn of the Dead. Thanks for playing. The answer is 2009's Jennifer's Body. I need you hopeless. <laughs> Wes Craven used a rotating set to shoot the scene. The shots were, we re, the, the shot where we reach each other, we were basically all strapped down, uh, tables, lamps they were all glued down the bed strapped down cameraman was strapped down actually at one point me and the cameraman and the director were upside down and tina's actually just looking up and we were on the bed we were on the bed upside down um it's the same set idea that glenn's death was shot in but i wanted to see if i could do this so the dance scene of the revolving room was from what movie? Royal Wedding. Let's see what it says here. I'm gonna see if, uh, so if you can see this, that's the revolving room. I used to dance as a kid, let me see. Royal Wedding and Fred Astaire's famous ceiling dance. Okay, so that is what inspired Wes Craven and the uh, special effects extraordinaire folks on A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, there was nobody better. They didn't use CGI. It was all like, you know, what Lucas, you love to do models and perspectives and that tongue coming out of the phone, come on. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Answer. Paul Partain and Marilyn Burns. Paul was an orderly pushing Marilyn Burns who was on a gurney. Did you guess head of the class? You won! Uh, congratulations. Or if you got it wrong, sorry. You don't die or anything. Have a nice day. And the answer is true. Dada and Hellworld were filmed back to back in 2002. It was Jason Voorhees. I played him in the ending scene of Freddy vs. Jason. Ken Kersinger played him throughout the film, which was shot in Canada, and they decided to change the ending. They were shooting the ending in LA, which I'm from, and they couldn't get Ken's visa in time, so I had already auditioned to play the character, didn't get it, and I was a second choice. So I shot the end scene of Freddy vs. Jason coming out of the water with Freddy's head. Iconic. The answer is Steve Miner. He directed Day of the Dead, which also starred Michael Welch and um, Friday the 13th part two and three. So I hope you got these questions right. Take care. And the answer is we're werewolves, not swearwolves. Hope you guys have a good night. Bye. So time for the last answer. The question was, was Jaws the highest grossing movie of the 1970s? The answer is false. 
Jules was the highest grossing movie in 1975, but in 1977, Star Wars came out and beat it. It's A and C. He was in a rock band and his best friend was Nick Cage. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I guess that's it. I just want to thank all my Nightmare on Elm Street fans, Candyman fans. They keep coming generationally. I specifically want to say during these times, stay safe. Uh, there's a lot of things being played out. My heart and my loving, my peace, everything goes out to everybody. The blacks, whites, all races. I think this is tough times for everybody. Be safe, be smart, and always be liking and loving and peaceful and good vibes to people. And let's continue on seeing horror films and entertaining ourselves with some fun stuff. And thank you very much for um, all you do. Peace. Jesus Garcia, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Rod Lane, up your nose with a twirling lawnmower.